like kids, very breezy sort it's of song breezy, in, a, in a way. What, what, sort of like a suede pop stomper. It is, yeah. That was another late one, wasn't it? We had a, yeah. uh, we had a wrestle with that one, didn't we? Do you remember? We did. It was a trauma. I think the, originally we, it was just a middle eight of a song, which Ed said, make that the chorus. And we had real trouble finding a, a place for it, a musical bits for the for the rest of the song and it was always um ed's baby really we were kind of like we're not too sure about this one and we had other songs by then to kind of think about like outsiders and no tomorrow yeah if it hadn't been for ed pushing it we would probably drop that song actually. yeah i think so and, and ed was like kind of, no we've got to get this right we've got and so we, really, it went uh, through about four or five <laughs> incarnations and di and changes in lyrics and changes in melodies and we had and yeah, and one lots of, of abandoned verses and and then then what always happens with these things is we were just in a rehearsal room banging through it and we and really just angrily went oh like, just oh, anything that's and just it. richard has started and then, playing this and thing it's just the same with together. trash yeah. 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 exactly so suddenly exactly. just comes together it's one we of those had this great chorus and no verse and then you wrote a verse in two minutes yeah, it's, you think about it, uh, uh, you sort of overthink it and overthink it and overthink it and you can't do it and then all of a sudden you stop thinking about it and do it. It's just by that time in the record we, it was very obvious to all of us that we didn't have a suede stomper. But it was weird, we, we kind of never worried about that until we got to that point. And then when I heard that chorus, which it, you're right, I think it was a middle eight. It was a middle eight. It yeah. was something else. Uh, it occurred twice in the song, but I just remember sitting there listening to it and thinking, oh, I don't really like this. Oh my God, what's this bit? And I think that's always the trouble when you write music, is that sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees, you just can't. And I think the band themselves just didn't, you know, they'd spent so much effort on the other bits, they didn't realise that that was the really good bit. Did and they take quite a lot of persuading then? Um, I think I think Neil's reaction was, oh yeah, you're right, whereas Brett was like, huh? Because I think Brett has been putting so much effort verse, verse on another bit. Work, and I think that's always like the, that's the, the, hard, the hardest thing about my job is that when you're having to tell somebody that the bit they've been spending all the time concentrating on isn't the important bit, because that's, that's a you know, really difficult thing to express. And also it's a very difficult thing to listen to. They're used to me, they know, they know what I'm like. Well, that's the thing, Th that's why, you know, uh, uh, that's one of Ed's main roles, I think, as a producer, is, you know, it's about, it's, it's having that kind of um, perspective. As writers, we kind of like, we're so close to it, and he, is, he, he, he can see it with a bit of perspective, and he's got good judgment with these things, you know, we trust his judgment, and it's, at the end of the day, it's, it can be really hard getting it right, and sometimes he's, you know, he's, he's, he's not a yes man at all. It's kind of like, you know, the number of things you reject is far outweigh the number you're, of things you you're accept. You're basically a no man. Oh, yeah. Really, no no, man. No. Yeah. And it's fucking brutal sometimes, you know, it's like, no, this is rubbish, do it again, do it again, do it again. We're like, for fuck's sake, you know. The trouble with that but song it was like it was so good, we just couldn't let it go. And uh, I was in the Czech Republic and I remember ringing you up and you sang a new verse down the phone at me. How about this? How about this? Yes. It, was like, it got to the point where, you know, it was like, <laughs> And at one point we had another song, we tried to change the key of that and fit that verse into yeah. this chorus. Yeah, it was, really didn't work. you know, no. And the trouble is that it feels like when you're doing that, you're desperate. You know, and it, it, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. And you, I think it's easier for people like me and Neil to do that because we're used to music being bits and chunks. But for Brett, I, I, I can see how hard that is for him to get his head around. He, he just finds the whole process very uncomfortable. So I know in my heart I've got to wait for Brett to fall back in love with the bit that he liked, find another bit that he likes just as much, and then it will work. And that took a few weeks. See, the, we thing got there in the, end. the thing is, if you listen to the record, it's probably the most immediate and the, probably the simplest sounding song on the thing. But the Look, that's the irony of it, isn't it? Exactly, but when you actually yeah. look at the genesis of it, it's The actual it's work actually that goes into making it sound yeah. simple and it's genuine patchwork, isn't it? Yeah. It's, like that, it's like that George Washington's axe, isn't it? The head's been replaced three times and the handle's been replaced <laughs> twice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still the same <laughs> So, and, and all these years of working with Suede now, you, are, you this, are you the sort of dark overlord who keeps them in the righteous <laughs> path? No, I'm really not. I, 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 it, yes, he is. It's just one of those things that... He wears a cape in the studio. They, they make it my it's job to do it. It's not, it's, you know, sometimes it is painful because as, as, as we go on and on doing this, me and Brett, it gets harder and harder to do it. Yeah, it does. It just, it, it gets more, we get more passionate about our little bits, the arguments get more ferocious, you know. Why is that, do you think? Because it's so important. But it's good, because we, because we can, it's good because we can really fucking argue with each other, and we do, but 
it somehow we can get turn up at the studio the next day and it's sort of yeah, it's not it, it doesn't sort of turn into nastiness it's kind of we, it kind of like we we managed not to step over a line and it's, it's always just, about, it's the just about the music it's just you about the music just about and it gets fucking nasty yeah, sometimes it's very intense this it album matters, was very intense because it matters you know, because but, um, we're both fighting for a different thing on the record. Yeah, we both but want the same thing, but we're, we're, we're looking at, we're trying yeah. to get it from different angles. I think. It's I mean, I think that the, the hardest <laughs> thing to explain is that when when this music comes in to fruition, if you if you if you write for an instrument, there's always a sense of being removed. So an idea can be rejected very easily because you've written it for an instrument. But when you're a singer and it's your own words and it's the own sound of your voice then A, it's harder to come up with, and B, it's much harder to, to have it rejected. It's, a, it's almost like a personal attack. It isn't meant to be, but, you know, so Brett will turn up with a melody and I'll go, well, rubbish, you know, and he feels slighted, understandably so. And I know that going into it, but there's no, there's no nice way of saying that doesn't work. It just is impossible. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> rubbish is There it is right there. That doesn't work. Ta it's uh, it's, it's very good, but it doesn't work. Well, no, you wrong. see, that's the trouble. It's not very good. <laughs> Have you always been quite blunt with them? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be, otherwise we don't, li we don't listen. Yeah. That's, yeah. Why, that's kind of why it works. It's strange. It's so 20... How many years now? 23. 23 years of, of that it's, of it's different now because, again, part of the reason why it's so tough for me is the creative process now occurs around my house. I don't write, but I sit there and watch them, you know, sit there and watch them write. And... Uh, and again, I'm mindful of the fact that, you know, it, it's inappropriate to stick my oar in straight away. You have to wait for things to develop. Um, and everybody in the band writes very differently. Uh, Rich and Neil work really, really well together, but they both work in completely different ways. Um, and Brett, again, is, his approach is very different. So, Why do they do it around your house? Have you got particularly good tea or something? Very good tea. Um, I don't know, and it's very flattering that they do it around my house, but I suppose all the recording gear is. Yeah, we kind of try and grab things as quickly as they happen. And again, part of the reason why this album at the beginning was so easy and fun to make was because the ideas were so quick. I think after that lunch we had uh, around at Brett's, um, we, we all felt so empowered. I think the thing about Blood Sports was, you know, it, making it, we were all really worried about what people would think of it. We liked it, but we were still worried. And then when the reaction came back, and it was a really good reaction, I think everybody felt very kind of like, great, we can do this now. So there was a level of confidence. Um, and that's, I think, you can tell that in the music. And some of the most interesting music was written day one. How did you approach this one? In the, I mean, the, in the, it's a light relief bit in the film. She got like the dog band star, Bare Bottom Man, who suddenly goes from this sort of romantic figure that he's always been to some bloke who looks like he's got a massive hangover, kind of like farting on his bed. I think we're, we're, we kind of talk loosely about this and I think, the, well, I, hope, I hope I got the right end of the stick in it, that the band were kind of comfortable with being a little bit tongue in cheek about their own legacy and, and I thought it'd be nice to kind of put, little, put something in there for the, for the fans. And it did actually get a bit of a reaction I noticed when it came up on the screen during the gig, which was good. Um, but yeah, it, was, I w it needed to be something that, that we could show how they, how they met. And I thought it would be nice if, if they met somewhere in, in suede history. All the little, there's lots of vignettes in, 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 that, in that piece that, that kind of reference other suede things. There's, there's the Dogman Star thing, obviously. Then the girl being sick is, a, is like a bit from electricity. And then the guys on the on the, the, on, guy on, well. on the on the sofa is a bit from Wild Ones video. So it's this sort of cheeky little thing for people that care, and if people don't know about it, then it doesn't matter, sort of thing. But I think sometimes it's quite nice to to, to, to sort of reference your own your own thing, as long as it's sort of I don't know. It's got to be done very carefully, though, isn't it? Oh, it has to be yeah, done no, very absolutely. carefully. We're, if absolutely, you look at the film, yeah. I'm actually at the end when he's dry humping the bed. It's right over my head. <laughs> Someone said there's a brilliant shot of you with your face entirely pixelated. <laughs> but I mean, you know, the whole self-reference thing is a, is a constant, constant um, sort of obsession when we're making re re records. You know, you, when you're making record, records of this phase of your career, it's all about how closely you reference and how, you know, it's, you, you know getting get the, the energy of what you used to do without it becoming self-parody. Is, is, that's the holy grail kind of thing, you know. Sometimes you 
get the wrong side of that line. And I really, I love the the look of the clip as well. It's so kind of jerky and lo-fi. Yeah, it looks like a lo-fi version of, a, of, a, of one of those was, covers, it, it, doesn't it? it? What was some your reference? It's really good. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, really good. a Polish director from the 80s that um, created these kind of weird worlds and I wanted to kind of have, uh, his, his way of doing it is to build a build a build and just have the same characters repeating and repeating and repeating. But we had to tell a story here so it had to be slightly different. Um, one of the things I love about it is it's quite trippy but not in the way Film is normally trippy. You know, no, it's not psychedelic oh, it's trippy. at all. Oh, yeah. It all goes like yeah. this, and the colours go. But there's something really weird about the repetition and the way the angles are all wrong. It's I mean, it, it, it was one of those things of like trying to imagine what it would be like to remember something when your mind is in a really, you know, yeah, Glastonbury '94. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs>